Hi, so the topic today is to differentiate between these two goals in analysis, explaining and prediction. So what might be a little bit confusing is you can actually use the same model to do both of these things. For example, you can use a linear regression and depending on how you're using it, you can be using it to explain or you can be using it to predict. And the primary motivator uh, for this video, my, my goal is to help uh, us as a community clarify when we're writing up our results to avoid using the word prediction when in fact the model that we're running is explaining. So I found this really great paper to explain or predict so I am presenting this as a brief paper overview and it's by uh, Galit Schmel. Schmel. Hopefully I'm saying her name correctly. So um, here's the paper uh, information. I will also put a link to this paper in the information box and she also has a blog post that also includes a video if you'd like to check that out. A video, it's about a half hour lecture that she gave on the paper. The first thing I want to clarify is because when I started reading this paper I had a, a mini, not panic attack, but I was like what? Because um, she talks about linear regression as testing causal hypotheses. So and that's not, it's not exactly what she'll, I'll clarify what she meant in a second. But first, just to make sure we're all on the same page, and I'm sure we are, because this has already been drilled into our heads, that correlation is not causation. So here we have uh, shark attacks, and, you know, they increase in the summer as does ice cream sales. So uh, shark attacks and ice cream sales would be highly correlated, but obviously ice cream doesn't cause shark attacks, and also shark attacks don't cause um, ice cream sales to go up. So correlation does not imply causation. Linear regression models are correlations or partial correlations depending on and if you have additional covariates in the model. So same applies to linear regression as used in the standard way. Um, you do not get causality out of linear regression. So her main points are the first one is that explanatory power is not predictive power. And also the model building is very different depending on whether you want to explain or predict. And I'm going to define explain and predict in a second. Um, but for today, I'm really going to just focus on explanatory power is not predictive power. And if you want to, you can uh, look at the paper as she goes through the whole, basically from designing a study to analyzing the data, the differences between explanation and prediction. Okay, so what do these words mean? So I think a lot of you probably already know, but just to make sure we're all on the same page, explain, now she, she presents this as being a causal explanation, but what's very important is she, she's not conflating causation and correlation. Um, she's talking about how when uh, people are designing, when they're coming up with an experiment, typically you have some type of theory, or you always have some type of a theory that's backing up what you're doing. And typically that theory has a causal relationship involved with it. So the causality comes from the theory and not from the model. So you can't prove the causality with the statistical model. Um, you can't prove the causality unless you, there, there are special models you can use, structural equation model, um, uh, Bayes nets, things like that. You can get at causality, but generally a standard regression no. So um, typical model, of course, regressions, correlations. And importantly, the end game here is inferential statistics. So you boil it all down to a p-value, and that is what you're looking at. And you're also looking at the parameter estimates. Um, so for this, if you're looking at the relationship between age and reaction time, then you would look at the coefficient for age so that you could describe or explain the relationship between age and reaction time. Prediction, on the other hand, um, the model, it's the same model, so that's important, but instead it's used to predict new records or scenarios. So a lot of machine learning models fall under this category, and linear regression does as well. And the accuracy is typically the measure of interest. How accurately can you predict a new record that you haven't yet seen? And it varies by field. So a lot of the stuff we do is explaining. 
but other fields, so maybe in econ or things like that, where you're trying to predict the future, prediction is more uh, common. Um, uh, computer scientists use uh, machine learning much, much more than we do. Although I will say in our field, machine learning is starting to become more popular. So that's part of the reason we, we should be more careful about these two terms, explain and predict. Last, uh, she also uses, she just briefly mentions descriptive modeling. This simply means, you could think of this as more exploratory. You don't really have causal theory. You're just looking at associations. It's still inferential. You're still looking at p-values. And this is just for building theory. And this is not her focus. She sticks with explaining and predicting. OK, just a quick clarification. Um, since we do use, um, for example, pattern classifiers, we do use some uh, multivariate modeling. And you might be thinking that I'm talking about the difference between univariate modeling, uh, say in an fMRI study, you run your voxelwise analysis, versus pattern classifiers. That, those are not the two things I'm differentiating here. Because, uh, granted, one of those is um, explaining. So the univariate model is explaining. And the multivariate model is predicting, but um, those are those are two different models. So I'm referring to using the same regression model for explanation versus prediction. So let me clarify that further. So let's say uh, we we've collected data, we we have happiness scores, and we think, well, you know, what makes people happy? Maybe their age vegetable intake, number of friends, amount of exercise. This is just a cartoon study, obviously. So I could look at this from either perspective. I could look at this in an explanatory fashion or uh, predicting. So if I'm using this regression for explanation, I'm just going to run the regression, report p-values, perhaps report the overall r-squared. My model selection would uh, involve kicking out things that aren't significant typically. Um, so if the number of friends doesn't have a significant p-value, I would remove it. Um, I would specifically look at these beta estimates to describe the relationships between these different things. Collinearity would be a problem. So if um, amount of exercise and vegetable intake were highly collinear, we would have to um, think about how we're going to deal with that if we're using regression for explaining. Because as I've shown before, collinear regressors, you know, it causes the variability to go up and it makes it harder to interpret uh, what's happening. On the other hand, if I'm using this exact same regression model, I can also use it for prediction. So that would involve a cross-validation. I would train the model on a set of data and then using an independent set of data, I would use the beta estimates from the training data, and then I would test it on the left out data to see how well it predicted happiness in that group. So you get some type of predictive accuracy out of it, and in that case, collinearity doesn't really matter. You're really less interested in um, the individual things that are driving the prediction. Your, your goal is just to get a good prediction out of the model. So that's the difference. So again, this is not uh, the difference between univariate and multivariate modeling and fMRI, although that is explaining and predicting. Um, it's more, you know, what she's referring to is basically using the same model in two different ways. Um, this is an explanation. This is, or this is an illustration that she uses in her talk. So she's talking about this Van Gogh painting and the, uses this to differentiate between explanation and prediction. So with explanation, the goal is you want to know what this, you know, obviously he was looking at some town when he painted this. And if the goal is explanation, you want this painting to very closely reflect what was actually there. So you want the thing, the data you have to match reality accurately. So that's the question here. Does this accurately reflect what's there? That's explanation, explaining real life. Prediction, on the other hand, it's more involved with just staying within the realm of the data. So we have our data 
and but 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 there's part of the data we didn't collect and the goal now is we have this unobserved data this chunk this lower right hand corner can we predict the unobserved data using the data that we do have so can we fill in this missing bit of the data so hopefully that helps um, clarify the difference a little further so can't we do both um, yes I mean obviously if you're running a regression and looking at p-values, you can then change gears and do a cross-validation and see how good the prediction is. But typically, um, you know, having the best model for prediction does not necessarily match the best model for explaining. So um, high R squared, for example, in your linear regression does not imply that you're going to have a good prediction. Sometimes you can remove significant regressors from a model and get a prediction that is better after you remove those significant regressors. Also, models that predict well may not have useful interpretations. Um, oh, which is what I just said. And um, for an example of this, too, is that um, if you use something like uh, ridge regression, Maybe I don't want to get into that, but if you have two highly correlated um, regressor or not regression, oh, yeah, 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 features, let's say in your regression model, and you use um, a regularized technique such as ridge regression, it doesn't pick the better one necessarily and keep it. It it not randomly, but it just kind of grabs one of the two highly correlated ones and keeps it. So you're throwing out something that maybe in the explanation sense would be interesting to know about, but when you're predicting, you don't care. You just need one of them because they're both doing the same thing. So um, it's another difference. So why, why aren't they the same? Well, another way to think about it is to look at expected prediction error. So in the prediction analysis, our goal is to, you know, why here, this is our, um, you can think of this as the, the dependent variable in the regression. So we want y to closely match its estimate from the model f hat of x. So this is the estimate and we would hope this difference would be very small, the squared difference. So e, this is just expectation. Um, so you can think of this as on average, how close is the real y to the estimated y? So with a little math, this can be broken down into three components. The first is the variance of y, and this is fixed. This is just simply the variance of the data. So regardless uh, if your goal is prediction or um, uh, explanation, this is fixed. It's not going to change. On the other hand, the last two terms do differ depending on explanation versus prediction. So we have the bias of the model and the variance of the estimates. So if you've been uh, hanging out on Mumford Brain Stats for a while and you've watched my regression videos, uh, perhaps you remember the Gauss-Markov theorem. So that's, you know, putting on our, um, that's focusing on just standard linear regression. So this would be explaining. And the Gauss-Markov theorem, uh, the, the takeaway is that the estimates that we use, the least squares estimates, if the assumptions hold, are unbiased. So that means that this bias is zero, and they have the smallest variance among all unbiased estimators. So it means this bias zero is zero, and within the models that have a zero bias, it has the smallest variance. Now, both then and now, I'm gonna repeat the fact that that doesn't necessarily mean it's the smallest overall variance. It's just the smallest variance within unbiased models. So the goal of the explanatory model is to reduce this bias to zero. And then this will be the smallest it can be while this bias is zero. On the other hand, with prediction, you want to reduce the sum as much as possible. So going back to ridge regression, um, and I've used this example in the past as well, ridge regression, what it does is it actually purposely biases your estimates. And the, what you get in return is a reduced variance. So it actually can allow you to reduce the sum to a value that's smaller than if the bias was zero and you had the smallest variance possible. Does that make sense? So maybe I could increase this bias to 0.5, but then that will allow my variance to be 
smaller than it would if I was restricted to the class of unbiased um, estimators. Okay, so the goal of prediction is to reduce the sum of these two things because the goal is to reduce this expected prediction error. So since those two goals are not exactly the same, that's why the best model for prediction may not necessarily be the best model for uh, explanation. But of course you can still do both and doing both things could help um, build the theory about the thing you're studying. So, um, you know, predictive models quantify the predictability of a type of phenomenon. So low predictability uh, could cue you into to knowing, clue you into knowing, hey, you know, there's something else going on that I'm not measuring or I haven't thought about. So it could lead to the development of new measures, different data, empirical approaches to answer this question. And then you can compare how close the predictive benchmark. So if you find the best model for prediction, um, how close is that to the explanatory model? If they're really cl close already, there's probably not much to gain. If they're really far apart from each other, that can help push scientific development. So, um, right, and all parts of the study are impacted by the goal, and just look at her paper for these details. In the interest of time, I'm not going to go into it. So this is, you know, study design, uh, the way you collect the data, and uh, so on and so forth. So the takeaway and my goal in presenting this is just be careful with the word predicts. It'd be nice to unify the definition across the fields. And um, I had a little happy moment. Um, a friend of mine knows that this is uh, something that I'm, you know, uh, interested in uh, getting, uh, trying to remove the word predicts when it was just a standard linear regression. And they had talked to the program officer at the NIH, and they had sent a little document uh, talking about their study. And the, the program officer was like, you know, you're using the word predicts here, and you can't make that conclusion based on the analysis you proposed. And this person was telling me because they realized I would get a kick out of that. But that's good. Um, and, you know, it makes me happy that more and more people are, are trying to differentiate between these two words. Um, and there's a value from these two different models. And we can get at different information by looking at the explanatory uh, abilities of our model as well as the predictive abilities of the model. So there's no reason why one field should only be running explanatory models and another model should only, or another field should only be using prediction. They're both useful. So that's it. Uh, feel free to join the Facebook group or follow on Tumblr or Twitter. And if you have some questions or comments, the best place for those is the Facebook group. And that's all I have to say, and have a great day.